they're waiting there to help us. They're like, oh, thank God you asked. So first, they've got a lot to share with you. And then secondly, they tend to come in with for your PPD, help you with your purpose, your path, your direction. And as you start to get more clarity on who you are, why you are here, and where you're going, now you can ask them. You're developing a relationship. It's like dating, and now you're diving deep together. You can ask anything you want. You can use it for manifestation. You can even use it to connect literally and talk with loved ones who've crossed over on the other side. Hello, passionate listeners and watchers. Welcome to Passion Harvest. I am Louisa, your host international passion ambassador thank you so much for joining us wherever you are in the world right now if you liked this episode please do subscribe my guest today is michael sandler michael sandler is host of the inspire nation show a top rated spiritual and self-help podcast and youtube channel michael is also a best-selling author speaker entrepreneur and co-creator of inspire nation university and the automatic writing experience online course he has over 25 years experience as an open-hearted warrior life coach michael's mission is to elevate consciousness and help people around the world shine bright he's known for his affinity for the color yellow and his high energy trademark Woohoo! <laughs> he's the author of all the automatic writing experience this is his story and this is his passion i'm so excited michael welcome to passion harvest well thank you so much for having me louisa and Woohoo! <laughs> I love your woohoo, and I'm so excited to dive right in. Um, I know you're an expert at this, and I've seen some of your shows of what you've manifested. But how do, how does one manifest miracles? Wow! The simplest answer that's coming to me is belief, but it's not the belief of "I believe, I believe." Mm -hmm. It's about getting into a state, getting into energetic alignment with what already is, and drawing yourself toward it. That can be asking the universe, it can be asking angels, but there is a resonant frequency that unlocks the doors to whatever you desire. There's also a resonant frequency you can say that unlocks the door to exactly the opposite of what you desire and when you start to understand that you understand that everything in life is a living prayer is a living blessing and we start to become very picky and choosy at where we want to put our attention and where we want to vibrate and so for someone who doesn't understand that how do we resonate at that certain vibrational frequency to bring miracles into our life well, okay, let's, let's start at its simplest terms. If you want a miraculous, beautiful day, and you get up and you're thinking it's going to be a miraculous, beautiful day, and maybe you, you hearken back to the most incredible day you've ever had in your life, and you think about it, and you dwell about, upon it, and, and then you start to go about your day, and one door opens after the next, after the next, a synchronicity, a person meets, a person calls, and it's this beautiful, glorious day because of the frequency you got yourself in. Now take the reverse. You get out of bed. Oh my God, another one of these days. Oh my God, I'm late. Oh my God, what am I gonna do here? You are now in the frequency of, oh my God. And that is what you will attract as well. So there is the expression, be careful what you wish for. But what you wish for is a vibration, is a frequency is a tune. I liken it lately to a hotel key. You go into the hotel and, and the person behind the counter takes the key and goes dun, dun, and, and charges it with a magnetic frequency or code, and then that'll unlock the door. And so the question is at the beginning of the day, for instance, what key or what do you want to charge that key with? And what door do you wish it to unlock? That's a beautiful, gosh, I just love your energy. And that's such a beautiful way to describe it. So in essence, everything is created from within us. We're not relying on anything external. No, it, it is a holographic universe, as within, so without, as above, so below. What do these things mean? What does hermeticism mean? What it means is 
that this pond that we're viewing at that we think is real is a reflection of something going on above or inside, depending on whether you want to call it 3D, 4D, 5D, 9D, any of those things. And what it means is, New Thought Movement has always said mind is creator. Mm -hmm. I believe it goes deeper than that. Heart is creator. The heart, the resonant frequency, and the heart produces a far greater frequency. They can measure it magnetically, a far greater frequency than the mind. Where you put your heart is where you create. Now, it is a co-creative universe. I have team members that are stuck in the Gaza Strip right now with bombing all around them. I would never say you created that. That's ludicrous. It is a co-creative process. Now, on the other side of the veil, we, in a sense, choose what experiences we want to have this lifetime for our expansion and our growth, but we did not do anything wrong to create horror, to create atrocity. However, with our minds, we are given the ability to uncreate in a sense and create something new. So in essence, we're the navigator of our story. We are the hero of our story, certainly. We're a co-navigator. The only reason I'm picking on that term is you can be the navigator going across, well, from going from Australia to the US, quite the journey. But the other actor in that play, uh, Mr. Wind, Mr. C, <laughs> whatever we want to call it, mm -hmm. has equal, if not greater bearing on whether we make it across or not. So our lives, all of our lives is a hero's journey. And, and if you watch a good Hollywood movie, really any Hollywood movie, it starts out with a tragic flaw. There's something wrong with the hero or the heroine. In fact, it's usually such a tragic flaw that, that we almost don't like them. But hopefully we hang in there. We've been sucked in enough. And then they start to wake up. They start to improve. Lights start to get better. The light goes on. And then the dark night of the soul hits. They make a poor decision and everything blows up. All seems to be lost. But then at the very last minute, the light finally goes on for good and they get what they want. That's in a sense what we're going through. The only difference is instead of necessarily getting what we want, because life is not necessarily easy, it's a school. It's perfect in that sense, not easy. But we are here for expansion and growth and the universe is going to expand and grow from within us. And so we choose our lessons. We come up with a lesson plan on the other side, so to speak. I've had two near-death experiences. You couldn't convince me otherwise that this is a cosmic setup. But when you understand that and you watch your own arc, you watch your own journey, you either become in far more control and you can call in those miracles or Though the worst may come, you have a completely unique perspective on things. Beautiful. I know you share this often. Do you mind sharing with the audience a miracle or one or two miracles that have occurred in your life? Jeez, my being here after my near-death experiences yes. is a miracle. Most recently, I have a near 40-foot 44 foot, we can call it a road yacht, an RV outside that is a combination home and a rolling studio and is the most magnificent thing in the world uh, for our purposes. That two months ago, we had talked about it. My wife and I had talked about it for 11, almost 12 years. But two months ago, we're going, are we going to do this? And the next thing you know, door open, door open, door open, door open, door open, door open. Door open. And right now, while we're having this talk, she is setting it up for us to embark across the entire North American continent in this thing. It, it's wow. total with, with a truck over 60 feet long and to live in this most amazing road yacht that was simply a glimmer in our eye. But we got in that frequency, we got a lock and all the tumblers fell into place. And I know that's, that's small compared to healings and things, but that's the most recent one. I mean, mm -hmm. I have twin titanium femurs. I have twin titanium hips uh, from two near-death experiences two, three, four days ago. And I was a professional cyclist for many years. I raced in Europe. But four days ago, I set a personal record on my bike at age 50. Wow. With all of these titanium parts told multiple times, you're never going to walk again. Having other people's blood coursing through my veins to keep me alive with no blood pressure and told I was going to lose a leg. If that's not a miracle, I don't know what is. 
I've heard you also talk about how we can manifest a new version of us. What do you mean by that? You probably just answered the question. <laughs> well, you know, there's a new version. There's a new version. Uh, all, all of your cells in your body, uh, I want to say reincarnate. It shows you where my mind is at, uh, but they all change over every two to three years. Okay. Bones might be a tiny bit longer. Brain cells might be a tiny bit longer, but they all change over. So biologically we're literally recreating a new, but what we can do is vibrate at a different frequency, make different decisions, choose different habits and literally reinvent who we are. Every single thing in our lives can change. So if we go back 25, 30 years, I was bouncing off the wall with ADHD. Actually, I was sent to the, in first grade, I was sent to back to kindergarten to shame me for the error of my ways. Second grade, I was sent back to the principal's office daily for being such a bad student. I wrote a book for kids and adults with attention deficit disorder and spoke across the world as a poster child for ADHD. And now I'm quiet. I've been joking with my wife, Jessica, lately. I'm like, is there going to come a day where you say, I'm just too quiet? <laughs> I've completely re wired who I am, chose what I want to keep, replaced other pieces. I'm still a work in progress. We all are. Yes. But there is almost nothing that we can't change about ourselves. But there's a danger in here. Love yourself up for who you are. Perfect, infinite, divine, loving being just as you are. And then if you want to do some customize, if you realize that you are a living art or living art, then change that. But with no judgment, no attachment and never get down on yourself for who you are. You're perfect. You're divine. You're infinite. You were given these skills and lack of skills, these abilities and lack of abilities to help you on your beautiful, unique path. I could listen to you all day. <laughs> you, you have a three-step process for manifesting. What is that? So if I'm to manifest, the first thing that I want to do is I want to get very clear on what it is I desire. Bring as much clarity to it. If you can't figure out the exact thing, bring as much clarity to the emotional state. The universe is like light. Well, it is light. I've got around me, you know, a whole bunch of watts of studio lights, nice diffuse lights, watt after watt of diffuse light. If I put them all together, I create a laser beam. It is that laser-like focus of taking all those watts and focusing on a very specific point that can burn through stone, it can burn through steel. So we want to manifest we want to get as much specificity as we can. The next thing that we want to do is go play. I like to say play in a space capsule. To me, a space capsule is if you picture somebody going up the ladder to get into their rocket ship or going to the end of, of a platform and going in, the door closes behind them. The world goes silent. And here you want to envision it heart first with everything you've got and live in this state. And if doubt comes out, then it will kick it out. It doesn't belong in the space capsule. The space capsule is yours. Don't go to doubt. And then the third piece is I teach a tool called automatic writing. So I have the book, all the automatic writing. A big congratulations. It's, it's fantastic. You. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. This is a, a major manifestation and something I never intended ever to write. I wasn't the angels guy. I wasn't the spirit guide guy. And, and this is a process that's been around for thousands of years and, and been very popular over the last 150. I ended up, I, I'll put it in quotes, ended up writing what I believe is the definitive guide, step-by-step step how to do it. 
with that said, the third step is to go into a process like automatic writing. Connect with your angels, connect with your guides, and make the ask. We think, oh, angels, guides, they're too busy to help us, or we don't believe in such things. Mm -hmm. On our better days, we don't believe in or on our worst days. We're very selective. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But when it comes to calling things into manifesting, no, no, that's not real. Call them in. Ask for help. Keep your angels or guides or whomever or whatever. Or your grandmother, Sadie, on the other side. Keep her on speed dial. <laughs> Write to her. Ask her out loud. And then if I was to include a fourth step just for fun, be ready to receive. The receiving rarely comes in the form that we expect it. And so we do all this great manifestation work. And then we don't see it. When we don't see it the way we expected to see it, we don't think the miracle is happening. When chances are it's just right outside the door, you only have to open the door. I love this. And I did read your book. So it's, I mean, it's all detailed in your book. Often the problem I find, and you've talked about the, the blocks of manifesting, but we can get so involved in the detail and expect it to occur in certain ways. What are the other blocks of manifesting? Well, the biggest block is, is I guess the biggest two are part A, one, worthiness. Right. The second is wounds, wounds and worthiness. They go hand in hand. So I'm not worthy of. So if I say, uh, I want a million dollars, first off, everybody wants a million dollars, but why? We need to be specific. If you want a million dollars and you just say a million dollars, million dollars, it probably ain't happening. If you know exactly why you want it and it charges you up and it lights you up and you get all excited, now we've got energy to play with. However, what happens is we go in and we don't believe what we can have. We don't believe what we want and we shoot ourselves down. Oh, that can't possibly happen. In other words, I'm not good enough to have. I'm not great enough to have. I'm not worthy of having. We get to lean into that and we get to start to clear those wounds. So incredibly important. You can do that through all the automatic writing experience. You can do it through things like emotion code and EFT tapping. There's some great techniques out there, but we get to look at what those wounds are of I'm not worthy. And then we have to look at the second category, wounds in general, which are patterns that have been running in us, perhaps since childhood, perhaps since our parents' childhood, perhaps since our parents' 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 childhood. And those energetic wounds, to me, it's like we have a, a literal fingerprint, we have a literal DNA, but then we have an energetic fingerprint or an energetic DNA that we carry around with us. That usually says when the going gets good, I'm going to grab a little pistol and shoot myself in the foot. And then I'm going to call it karma. I must have done something wrong. I don't deserve that. No, you had nothing to do with it consciously, but there's an energetic pattern running in you. If we go to uh, Aboriginal, if we go to Native American, if we go to the shamanic side of things, they would say it's soul retrieval work. Pieces of you are literally broken or missing. And we need to retrieve that to get you back into energetic harmony, energetic unity, union. And then your current can flow as it needs to, to attract, which means manifestation is not simply sitting on the couch as they do in the secret. And I love the secret It's super helpful for people and envisioning a car and the car, watch out, is going to fall out of the sky. If you haven't worked on those wounds and blocks and worthiness, then every minute that you do this, driving that car is going to be vetoed by the subconscious worthiness, by the energetic wounds and blocks as well. So we hold on to the steering wheel. And now here's the fun. Lean into your wounds and blocks with everything you've got. So confronting and embracing is the best way to move through them. You have to. That's what this lifetime is about. <laughs> The lifetime, ups and downs, hills and valleys, beauty and, and tragedy. But really what it is, is about growth. And, and if you say, well, I don't deserve this. Well, the, the expression goes, and I don't believe in a bearded white guy up in the sky. I believe in a love that is everything, a field of love that is everything. But God can never, will never give you more than you can handle. What you signed up for, or ascribed, or signed a contract to on the other side was never more than you can handle. 
but it's about growth. And as, as the expression goes, well, I'll, I'll use a terrible joke that I used to love quite a bit. I'm going to see if I still like it. Okay. Which is the, um, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Right. And it's actually true. It's a, it's a good statement. I don't know <laughs> if it's a joke, but. <laughs> it is supposed to be a joke, okay. but it is actually a yeah. truism, isn't it? Yeah. We have to flip our energy and then the beatings stop. So the only way to do that is to lean into it and say, what is here? What can I learn from this? So recently, it's interesting. I have had three or four boo-boos with vehicles in my life, and they have always occurred backing up. And when I got this beautiful RV that hooks up to a truck, the gentleman who sold it to me, he goes, I'm going to help you attach it. He goes, okay, back up here. Okay, got it. Move forward. Okay, it's good. All right, back up. And I backed up one foot and the RV fell on the brand new truck causing $8,000 in damage. The truck was less than 24 hours old. Gosh. And yeah, that was a, that was a hard moment. And, and I've come a long way down this path. And, and, and I, I, all I could say to him is, I, I, I love you very much. And he goes, I feel really sick. And I said, well, we're going to feel sick together right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you embraced your emotions so often where we taught or we're taught or we don't like negative well, what we consider negative emotions we hide from them they'll just come back with a vengeance they'll come back and come back or they'll form disease like a volcano inside that has to come out so when i came back here because that was a uh, uh, three thousand kilometers away when i got back here i started leaning into it and i'm going all right backing up where does this wound come from and I found the wound and I started clearing it and I get a little more clearing work that I get to do on it. It was actually a birth story. When I came here, I decided I didn't want to be here. I wasn't even born yet. And so when it was time to come out, I wasn't coming out. And so the doctor grabbed some tongs and literally dented my head. I had a cone head for 24 hours as he's yanking me out. And that trauma has stayed in my psyche so that I repeat wounds whenever I back up until I will learn to face the original problem, the original learning. That's amazing. And then I can clear it and let go of it. It's wild. And it's also trusting what, what, what you're feeling and understanding, especially with that birth story, which is remarkable. It, it is. Thank you. It is. It's interesting that it's a birth story because there's a huge metaphor to that. This trusting says that when you feel bad, when something has happened, when you want to turn, I want to say turn the knife, but at least turn the mirror on yourself and say, you did this. Instead, what we get to do is go and take and put ourselves in our arms. Take the baby Louisa, the baby Michael, put ourselves in our arms and instead of blame and judgment say it's okay it's okay it's okay i've got you i know you're hurting right now i know you're struggling i can't even imagine how much you hurt but i've got you and we're gonna get through this together that was that was beautiful <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, I could talk to you for hours. I just want to, it came to me so often we go into victim mode and I don't, I mean, from my personal experiences, that certainly doesn't propel you forward at all. When we can remove victimization, things start to change as well and to stop blaming everything external. So after the, the, the RV got dropped on the truck, I'm watching my emotions. I'm experiencing my emotions. And, and I allowed myself to feel this for about 10, 12 days, not trying to go into a state of victimhood, but I was pretty upset. And I did clearing work, but you can clear a whole bunch, but then you go look at your trunk. The truck was, has been munched. <laughs> I'm really like, sorry, oh. by the way. Oh, thank you. It's, it's all, it's, it's okay. And, and like I said, I have team members in a war right now perspective, not a problem at right, all. Right. Every day, a great day right now. However, I had an attachment. I've got to be honest. I was attached to this gentleman calling me up and going, it's my fault. I'm sorry. 
Because all I was doing is I was in the truck. He said, back up, pull forward, back up. Boom. What happened? Right. And I was attached to him apologizing to this. Now, the US is quite the litigious society. If you apologize, you open yourself up to being sued. Obviously not my game. Right. But it's a real concern of someone. And so this was starting to eat me up and I'm leaning into it and I'm not able to fully heal till I realized 10 or 12 days in, I need to forgive him. And in forgiving him, I'm forgiving myself and I'm able to let go. And so I had been saying Ho'oponopono, Hawaiian healing and forgiveness prayer, mm -hmm. but I wasn't fully for him or for us in this experience because we were completely cosmically intertwined. But it wasn't until I had leaned in enough to understand it had nothing to do with him. He was just an actor in my play. And this is for my growth. And it is all, I, I like to say either God is, everything is spirit. We can't say, well, this is spirit and that's not spirit. Even war is spirit. It's just, just crazy to me. But it is all part of the game for our learning and for our growth and for our expansion. And we can choose to do otherwise. That's the cool thing. We don't have to allow things to, it, it is as it is, is a very dangerous statement because that completely disempowers you. However, if I realize that if I offer forgiveness, I change the entire nature of what took place and I learn such a powerful lesson for myself that apparently universe felt I was ready to handle. So universe always gives you, I like to say, the wound is where the kiss. The wound and the cure match perfectly. What does that mean? This was the most expensive vehicle I've ever got, the best vehicle I've ever got. And, and I've got a, a, I'm not trying to post, but I've got a, a shiny yellow and gold Tesla outside. And this thing was that much more than that, this <laughs> truck. So, and I was so proud and so excited. And technically it's Jessica's vehicle and so happy to be bringing it home for my wife. And then boom, the wound is where the cure is. Right. If it didn't really hurt, I wouldn't have a chance to grow. And it was mangled. It took guys coming out with a crowbar to actually get it open in the back to actually take the RV and separate it from the truck oh so that they gosh. could take it to the body shop for a month after I just bought it. Oh. The wound is where the cure is. You, you, it's, it's hard to laugh at it in the moment. If you can, great. And, and even in the moment, I'm like, I know someday I'll be saying, that this was a good thing and this happened for my highest good, but right now it hurts. However, when you step back and you really get this concept, then you go, oh yeah, it was a cosmic setup. It had to happen this way. So that, and so that, and so that. And then it changes the timber of everything. You're able to step outside of your circumstance because your circumstance was never your circumstance to begin with. It was just the story you ascribe to it. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and, and it's, it's recycling these conflicts or contrast, which enables incredible spiritual evolution and growth. Yeah. So although I do have an expression, Lisa, and that expression is kind, gentle, easy, good. May I have my lessons in the kindest, gentlest, easiest, best fashion possible? Yes, please. I want that too. <laughs> the universe doesn't always agree with me. <laughs> but since I renegotiated the contract, it's at least kept me pretty healthy rather than horrific breaking of bones. Instead, yes. it's a, you know, an RV falling on a truck, which is so much smaller. Amazing. You spoke earlier about uh, calling in help or guidance. How do we call in our angels? To me, my favorite method that I do each and every day, pretty much without fail, even if I miss it first thing in the morning, I'm going to come to it later in the day. It's automatic writing. And automatic writing is a process where I love doing it first thing in the morning. You can do it late in the evening as well. You want to do it when the world is quiet, at least to, to begin is you go quiet 
You get in somewhat of a meditative state. You write out some prayers. You keep the pen on the paper. And you literally write to your angels or guides. And the pen just keeps moving. And they write back. And you start to develop this relationship where you're able to first hear them more and more on paper, but then more and more throughout the entire day until I'm not there 24 seven. I wish I could say I was, I'm working on it, but they are by my side 24 seven and they are talking to me 24 seven. It's just that I still don't always listen. Right. But that voice has gotten louder and louder and louder still until I know none of us are alone, but I know I'm not alone. I know I'm guided. I know I'm loved and I can plug in and get direction on a moment's notice. And it all comes out of doing my writing because what happens is automatic writing. What it does is it aligns you with a frequency. You can say you're putting your hand up and the angels are bringing, putting their hand down. If we want to call it that, and they're starting to pull you up, but also your frequency changes which is why people who are depressed, who are stuck or in PTSD or stressed and anxious start to feel better, maybe even before they get words, because your frequency is going up and up and up as the angels are reaching down to grab you. But then what happens is as you start to plug in, it's as if you start to turn, turn down the dial on all the extraneous noise and turn up the dial on your guides. And that's where the magic happens because now you're living, I guess, going back to what you said at the very beginning, you're living a different life because you're living through that internal GPS rather than going blindfolded and stumbling through life. And you talk about in the book with practice, you can really ask them any question. Anything at all. Now in the beginning, It is hard to ask emotionally laden questions because the ego really wants to get involved. And there are techniques in in the book so that you can separate what's ego and what's not. As you go along, it becomes easier and easier. But in the beginning, asking questions about your finances might be a little difficult. Or if you're struggling in a relationship, it might be a little difficult. But over time, you can ask about finances. You can ask about relationship. I'm not so sure about investment advice. Ego (laughs) usually gets involved, but you could. And, and um, like asking about my team members who are stuck in the war right now, I'm having a hard time dissecting my heart from that picture or being able to step back because that is so emotionally yes. laden. But you can ask anything. And so I say the first thing that we want to do is, is we give the angels and the guides the ability to say anything they want to us because there have been things you, you've got to realize. People don't realize that this that for hundreds of thousands of years, we always prayed to the elders, we prayed to the ancestors, we prayed to angels and guides, and they were used to helping us. Every civilization in the past was completely interwoven with the other side of the veil until now. Now we have this completely collective amnesia. Who knows if it started with Aristotle or Plato Plato or where it started, but we stopped believing in a sense. And we shut the doors to spirit and they're waiting there to help us. They're like, Oh, thank God you asked. They can't help except for really life or death experiences. They can't really help until you ask. But now you start asking and they're there and they're ready to speak to you and they will help you with anything. So first they've got a lot to share with you. And then secondly, they tend to come in with, for your PPD, help you with your purpose, your path, your direction. And as you start to get more clarity on who you are, why you are here and where you're going, now you can ask them, you're developing a relationship. It's like dating. And now you're diving deep together. You can ask anything you want. You can use it for manifestation. You can even use it to connect literally and talk with loved ones who've crossed over on the other side. It's beautiful. And you also talk in the book, you can ask your future self as well and potentially find out things about your future. 
that's one of my favorite techniques because talking to your future self. So time, as Einstein showed it with his formula e equals MC squared, time is not real. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to scientists like Dr. Dean Radin, head of Center for Noetic Scientists, who's literally done experiments that prove time is not real. And so we can go to our future self who is here in the now. And we can ask her or him things about ourselves and what that does. And it doesn't mean that, that your future is set in stone. There's an infinitude of possibilities. But what your future self can help you do is move past this block, this subconscious block or wound that you keep on banging up against and help you jump on the other side of it and see the potential for a new future. And now you get to play here rather than banging your head against the wall. And that changes everything it frees you up to create because if you hit a subconscious block you don't get the hotel key to play on the other side so instead go to your future self who's always already living in that hotel room mm. and say can i borrow the key it's almost feeling the vibration of that timeline Amen. you put it perfectly oh thank you um <laughs> just another quick one more question i i'm assuming you get asked this all the time how to how do i know i'm not making it up it's a great question. So I can give a little bit of a tongue in cheek response at first, which is it's okay to make it up because there's a frequency behind it and it's actually all frequency. So we got to cut ourselves a break. And when I first learned automatic writing, it was a process. It wasn't what I teach in the book, although there were some similarities. It, it was definitely an inception point or a seed. I learned a process of communicating with the Akashic masters, kind of the librarians of the universe. Yeah. And they were telling me all of my greatness, how amazing I was, how I was going to speak on a mountaintop high before thousands and thousands or millions of people. Which is and what you're doing now. You hit the nail on the head. I didn't believe them. I said, this stuff is bogus. <laughs> and I was actually really upset that my ego was hijacking this beautiful process. And I didn't do it for another couple of years. And then I got the same result. And then I had a past life regression and I got the same answer. You're going to be speaking from a mountaintop on high thousands, thousands and millions of people. And finally, when in our lives, my wife uh, had mold toxicity poisoning. I had had my second near death experience. We're wiped out financially. We're losing our dream home on Maui. I'm going, all right, there's got to be a different way here. I'm like, all right, I give, I'll talk to you guys. And it was a leap of faith that says, all right, I don't know if this is real or not, but I'll play. And over time, it became very easy to tell, is this a loving, kind, gentle voice? Not me, not my ego anyway. Or is this the shoulda, woulda, coulda voice, the voice of shame, the voice of judgment, the voice that's shutting all over me? <laughs> and you can literally in automatic writing, I detail how you didn't do it, but, but you could literally ask, is this my ego? I did it again this morning when I was discussing the war, which is like, to me is, is are, are my friends, are they going to live or die? That's like the most, and, and, and it's literally touch and go over there. Uh, bombs going off literally all around them. They're hiding under a stairwell. And if they go out and try to get to safety, they get shot and killed by a drone. And so I, I'm like going into automatic writing and saying, you know, this seems pretty emotionally laden. Is this my ego? The cool thing about ego is for some reason, it's something like international law. It has to say yes, if it is. And so it becomes very clear and easy to tell, is this ego? And um, when you start play in, playing and you're able to identify what we'll call it our higher self and what's our ego, it frees you up because now you're going to make different decisions throughout the entire day, not just when you're in front of a book. If we are just learning a technique, for instance, that helps us in the cave, but not out in the real world. Well, today that's meaningless. You can't go on the street corner and go, well, let me grab my journal and, and start writing to the guides and see what comes out. You need to access that GPS now and you get that it's fantastic my gosh you've offered so much information today is there any question that i haven't asked you michael that you'd like to share with the passion harvest audience and again a big congratulations on all your book 
Thank you. Well, I'd certainly send everybody over to automaticwriting.com where they can get the book. They can get a multitude of copies to give to friends, to give to loved ones, to give to your local library. Again, that's automaticwriting.com. But my most important message, it's, a, it's two parts. It's really short and sweet, though. First off, anyone can do this. Anyone. You don't need any talent. You don't need any skills. In fact, we've got the whole brain science, the neuroscience involved that shows that if you're not a great writer, that's awesome because the writing center of your brain shuts down for automatic writing. So even better. And secondly, you are love. You came from love. You couldn't be anything other than love. And you are completely surrounded by love. So don't think it's my karma to struggle. It's my karma to suffer. Somebody else can happy, have happiness and joy, but not me. No, it's your birthright. Dive into a process like automatic writing. Talk with the angels. Go right now. Beg to the angels. They don't care how you come to them, but take it out of the small self, the egoic self that says, poor me, woe is me. And I have been there and go to something greater. Go from small mind to greater mind. Go from small self to greater self. And then begin rocking it and living the life of your dreams. Because it is available for you. Not just for me. Not just for Louisa. But for all of us. Other than that, I'd say check out inspirenationshow.com. we got lots of great shows. But listen to Louisa. And listen to what she has to share because I can see your heart and you've got it going on in spades. So listen to her. You have a great guide. Oh, what a beautiful way to end the show, Michael Sandler. I don't know whether to cry or to clap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest and for anyone that's listening or watching, all your links and details will be in the show notes as well. It's been an honour to have you on the show and I'm so inspired. Thank you it so much. And I have to ways. say you're just such a remarkable light worker in the world. It goes both ways. It takes one to know one. So yes. big, big hugs, lots of love. Big hug you, to you too. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Bye, Michael. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. If you like this episode, please do subscribe for weekly passionate, inspirational interviews.